Hello, my name is Dustin Kirkland. I'm a product manager at Google, and I'm here with Michelle Casbon, and she is a, in developer relations working on the Kubeflow project. Uh, we're currently on the path to Kubeflow 1.0. Uh, it's coming soon. What, uh, what can we expect to see in Kubeflow 1.0? Yeah, so we just rolled our 0 0.5 release a few months ago, and we're preparing for 0.6, which is sort of the last leg towards 1.0. And we're really focusing on taking a lot of the, the learnings from our initial users. So the ones that have been with us from the very beginning. Kubeflow is about a year and a half old at this point. We launched in KubeCon Austin a year and a half ago. And at this point, we're focusing on hardening our APIs. So we've been listening to our users. We have a great contributor base and they've given us a lot of feedback on what works for them and what doesn't, which features they like, which features they don't. And so now we're hardening those. We're making sure that people who've installed it can upgrade in a seamless way. Uh, enterprise features like multi-tenancy, um, more individualized granular security controls, that kind of thing. So making it a robust experience for enterprise, for startups, for everyone in between. And as I understand it, like one of the real goals of Kubeflow is to get these uh, AI ML tools in the hands of data scientists without those data scientists also having to be Kubernetes certified system administrators, right? That's right. We want to provide access for both DevOps and data scientists uh, and machine learning engineers, everyone in between. So we don't want to take away any control at the Kubernetes layer. That's really important for enterprises. But we don't want a data scientist to have to learn about Docker and containers and everything, all the nuances of the Kubernetes platform. So we have one of the first components of Kubeflow was Jupyter Hub. And we've really expanded on that to make it possible for data scientists to not really ever leave that environment, to be able to build a model, train it, and deploy it directly from within an environment that they're familiar with. And so the idea is that DevOps has a lot of the fine-grained controls, but they empower data scientists to do everything they need to get their work done in a scalable way that is sustainable, where everyone's happy, everyone's sort of living in the space that they're comfortable in and not stepping on each other's toes. And in terms of community and the community contributions around Kubeflow, Google fits into that, of course. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about what Google does in the community and where else you see community participation in the Kubeflow project. Yeah, so uh, Kubeflow started out as a Google project a year and a half ago. It was launched at KubeCon, and we've seen an incredible uptick in the number of contributors, the number of PRs that we've seen. Uh, one of my favorite new features uh, was just debuted a week ago at our community call. We had a few researchers in Italy. They showed this demo of some notebook features. So something that makes it even easier for data scientists to essentially add tags to a notebook so that it will automatically run within pipelines. And this whole story of the more people use the platform, the more they come up with ideas that we haven't considered before, and the more that community base grows. So we had a really successful happy hour last night. I think there were there were only a few Googlers, but it was we packed this tiny neighborhood bodega. There were people spilling out into the streets. Um, and it was people from all over the world. Um, and, and that's really encouraging to see. We have a lot of big support from, from Azure. We have a, a bunch of AWS integrations. It doesn't just run on the Google platform. It's designed to be a portable platform for running machine learning anywhere you have a Kubernetes cluster. It uses vanilla Kubernetes APIs and the, the influx of people coming from all over and adding to that has been incredibly encouraging. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, and tell me a little bit about the applications you're starting to see, that maybe some of the ones you're most excited about seeing developed on top of the Kubeflow platform. So the thing that I'm most excited about is part of the keynote was a few people from CERN who came up and talked about this public data set that they have. So they replicated the Higgs boson experiment and they used, they did that on GKE. And so I'm meeting with them very soon. I get to actually visit CERN and take a tour. I've been wanting to do this for so many years. If you've seen the documentary Particle Fever, it is incredible. And so I get to see that in person. And I'm hoping that when I meet with the team that I, I can come up with like some sort of way to get them running on Kubeflow because it would be amazing to work with that data set and, and to sort of help them along their journey. Michelle, thank you very much.